Hello, I'm John Clothier and welcome to my workshop. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be doing a series of videos that talk about how you can decorate some of your wood turning. We're going to be focusing on colouring and a little bit on texturing. Today's video is going to be a very much just beginner's guide and we're going to start with the very beginning of the basics of how I go about doing my colouring. So, without further ado, let's begin. In this video, we're going to be looking at the very basics of colouring. When I first started colouring, I did it with bowls, and I think that's a really good place to start. With that in mind, I've got this piece of sycamore, and it's mounted on the lathe. I'm not going to actually make a bowl from this, we're just going to use the front face, and then once we're done with it, we'll take it off and we'll do something else. So where this has got to, as I said, is it's trued up, and it has been sanded. Now when you're sanding, you need to be absolutely meticulous in the way that you do it. Any lines that you leave behind, any scratches that you can see with your eye, the colour will magnify. And they will really stand out, and it could potentially ruin your piece. So make sure you sand, in making sure you go right the way through the grits. Doesn't matter where you start, start at 80 or start at 120 or 180, wherever you're turning leads you best to start. Then you want to go all the way up to 400 grit. And that's where I am with this piece right now. So the first thing we want to look at is the fact that it's dusty. Now, I don't know if this will pick up well on the, on the camera, but I can run my finger across there and I can see all the dust. We need to get that off. That's gonna be in the grain and we need to remove it. The best way to do that is with some denatured alcohol or some methylated spirits. So when I'm cleaning the wood, I'll spray the methylated spirits or denatured alcohol onto a tissue. You get a fair amount on there. And then all we want to do is just clean. Now if you're fortunate to have an airline, like I have, you can also blast it with air and that will get rid of most of it. So with that now cleaned and the spirit all evaporated, we're ready to move on to the next step. But before we do, we want to just make sure that we're protected. I always wear these black nitrile gloves when I'm colouring. It prevents any of the stain from getting on your skin, and of course that can be a nightmare. These are inexpensive. I buy them in boxes of 200 at a time from Amazon, and they work out as pennies each. The other thing to think about is our lathe. Now, you could just clean the lathe afterwards, but I always say, put a board down, and then if you get any spray, it's going onto that scrap board, and you don't have to worry about it. Now I've picked a particularly boring piece of sycamore here. There's not really a lot of grain pattern going on, and this is ideal for colouring, because we can do some really quite exciting things with colour that otherwise wouldn't be there with this wood. To start with, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to colour it blue, just so that you can see what it looks like. Once we've done that, we'll move on to the next technique. So you want to take yourself a piece of kitchen paper, and then what you want to do is you want to fold it up and make a nice pad with it. What we can then do is we can put our colour onto the tissue. Now you want to face away from the piece because in other words you'll end up getting some overspray on it and that could ruin it. But I'm just going to spray a couple of squirts onto the tissue and then all we need to do is just apply it. Then when the tissue stops to apply in colour and it starts to get a bit hard work, just give it another squirt. There are two ways you can apply. You can either go with the grain or you can go round in circles. I like the going round in circles method because it does give you some variety and it gets the colour right in but it does very much depend on the piece of wood. You can also, when you're using the circle method, you can blend, which means that you can remove any harsh lines between, for example, like here, you can see there's a harsh line between the two colors, say between the two colors, between the, that lighter blue and where it's darker because there's more color. And using the edge of the tissue, you can rub that in and you'll end up without any visible lines. I 
Okay, and there we go. That's it colored, um, pretty straightforward. Now you wanna leave that to dry for a little while before you do anything else. And I should just point out that apart from sanding, and I very much recommend only dry sanding, so don't use any oil or any abrasive paste, apart from sanding, there's nothing else has been done to that after the tool left it. You don't wanna put any sanding sealer down or any oil or anything like that at this stage. Because this is water-based, it will take a little while to dry. Not long, maybe a couple of minutes, but we can speed that up. We can speed that up with a hairdryer. So we've got a standard, normal, regular hairdryer here. I'm gonna put it on a low heat setting. And what's really important is don't focus it on one particular part of the piece, or you might end up with the wood splitting on you. I'm just gonna put it on and give it a dry. Now you could leave that there, and that looks pretty good on its own but I'm gonna show you another technique where we can make it look even better. If you were happy with that, all you want to do is just put some sanding sealer over it and then you could hollow out your bowl and then apply your usual finish. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of this back off again, re-sand it to 400 grit, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so that's all the blue gone. Now let me show you the next technique. What we're going to start to do now is layering colour. And the easiest way to start off with that is by applying a dark colour to the wood, then removing a lot of it, but leaving some behind, and then applying a top colour. So as I said, I'm going to start by applying a darker colour. And for that, I'm going to go with black. So once again, I've got my board down, I've got my gloves on, the wood's been sanded to 400 and I've cleaned it. I've got my kitchen towel, which has been folded into a neat little pad. I'm going to apply the black. So, so the black is just applied in exactly the same way as we did the blue. Little circles, try not to put too much colour down in one place. Try and get it even, but actually if you don't get it even, it's not the end of the world and you'll see why in a second. Right, so let's leave that to dry and then we'll come back with the next step. Okay, so that's dry. Now what we want to do is we want to remove a lot of it. And we can do that with sanding. So if you sand up to 400 grit, which is what I recommend, go back to your 400 grit and just sand it again. So as you can see, most of the black has gone, but what it has done is it's left it in kind of a fairly random way. I've also left it a bit more in the middle because I just wanna show you the difference between where there's a bit more black and a bit less black. But you'll see that like areas like here and here where the grain, although you can't see it, the grain's absorbed more of the black. So what's happening is, is it's creating pattern. If you find that when you're trying to sand it back with the last grit, in this case, 400 grit, and you find that it's not coming off quick enough, you can go back up through the grits, say to 240, but you must come all the way back down to 400. So now I'm gonna give it a little bit of a quick clean with the mess, and we put the blue on. So exactly the same blue as before, exactly the same method. Right, there we go. Now hopefully you'll be able to see the difference. I will try and put up a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the difference between just putting the blue on and putting the black on with the blue. Remember this is not something dramatic we're looking for. This is a subtle effect that just gives a little bit of extra, a little bit of body to the colouring that we're doing. Just to highlight a couple of points though, you should be able to see in the middle, you can still see where there's more black. So you should be able to see that there will be a difference depending on how much black you leave on. Also, you can see around this area and around here where more of the black is showing through and it really does add a bit of character. Now that looks great on its own and you could quite happily carve the bowl and finish it as per before. But I'm just gonna show you one last trick before we go, which can show you how you can just bring it to the next level. And it's back to the sanding. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take my 400 grit and just give it a gentle sand. We don't wanna take too much of this blue away, just a gentle bit. Right, so as you can see, I've taken off some of it, but I've left most of the blue behind. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take another blue, in this case, midnight blue, and apply it to a few key areas. 
Because this is a darker blue, I'm going to concentrate on areas which are already a bit dark. For example, over here. So using the circular motion, I'm coming in from the middle, out towards that end, and just round. There's also another area down here which looks like it could be a bit of interest, so let's add some dark here too. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to take another colour, in this case it's plum. And I'm going to put that on to sort of blend between the two. Now what I want to try and do when we're doing this is avoid any harsh lines. So I can see here there's some really distinction between the dark and the light. And we need to try and blend that. Up here it's okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our stone blue. And what we'll now do is put a colour over it. I'm going to start in this lighter area and work in to the darker. And there we go. So hopefully now I'll be able to put this up and the other two for you to compare the differences. But I think you'll agree, this has got more character and there's more going on. And this makes it look that much better. Okay, so just so you can get an idea about how this might look, I've given it a very quick coat of lacquer just to bring up a bit of the shine. And I hope you'll agree that that looks amazing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you found it useful. I plan to do a few more of these videos, so hit that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications of when they're released. Bye for now.